For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. What is art? Um, it's a very broad term. It's a very difficult one as well. Well, let me throw that question over to uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, we were just trying to uh, clarify what art is. Uh, it's just something for your eyes to look at. Right, it's, right. it's just a change from the norm, isn't it? Um, mm. I mean, that's why I think most people have it. But then, the problem is, I'd, I'd never buy a piece of art. I don't see the point in buying something, because I know that my eyes will get bored of it eventually. Right. Have you got much art in your house? Yes. Mm. Because it gives me pleasure, and it don't, I don't get tired of it, I don't get bored of it. Do you look it. at it every day? Well, it's there, isn't it? It just adds Yeah, but other things are there. Dust it. is there, but... Surprisingly, I've not compared I think <laughs> I've, I've to dust as often as I perhaps should. <laughs> but um, the thing about... Uh, and this, I think, may be intriguing to you. Uh, Damien Hirst, of course, is more of a conceptual artist like Tracy Emin, and a lot of what contemporary art does is followed on from a guy called Marcel Duchamp, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh. Now, he famously, he famously took a gentleman's white urinal like you'd find in a pub toilet, and he put it on its side, and he signed it with a fake name, and he put it in an art gallery. Now, he did that in about 1917, perhaps a bit later. It, I, it just annoys me, because there'll be snobby people who haven't got a clue, and they're looking at that and they go, oh yeah, I see what he's trying to say. Well, that might make them think, they might... Damien Nurse, I don't, I, I don't feel angry with Damien Nurse, really, because right. he's getting away with it. But why does that annoy you? Because it's people falling into the trap. Damien Nurse, before he dies, I bet he goes, what a laugh that was. I had everyone on. There's a very good point as well, because some people think that the greatest art form of uh, the last hundred years is marketing. Yeah. Some people say that that is his art, that it's not good enough to do it, you've got to then get away with it. And if art, if the point of art is to inflame, I don't think anything inflames people more than the discussion about whether something's art or if someone's taking the piss or if someone gets 50 million for something, do they deserve it? Is it worth a hospital? Well, what do you think? What do you think of the shark in a tank? I, I, I think I was blown away by it. I, I thought, thought I'd never seen anything like yeah. it before. It was sort of spectacular because it is so huge and so vast. And to have put a shark you know, in formaldehyde, and to have hung it in an art gallery, it's very striking when you see it. Yeah, it's it a is. remarkable achievement. We, but we, what we is went he? Is he an artist or a fishmonger? <laughs> they, what he's done, anyone could have done what he did. Yes, but not everyone did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting point that you raise. It's the same old point you always oh. raise. Not anyone could have done it. That's always the same point you make. Anyone could have done but, it. Carl, but they didn't do it. You can say the same about Michelangelo. Is he an artist or a painter and decorator? Well, it hasn't caught on, has it? Like the crying boy photograph. No one's having them in their house. No one's gone, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen the new trend, a shark in a tank? No one's got the room, no one wants it. <laughs> and that, to me, shows you what's popular. At the end of the day, if everyone wants one, he's got to be good, hasn't it? But I think if people were given a chance to appreciate more sophisticated things, then, then, then they would. And I just think that that's, I think that's true in all walks of life. You, you know, it's, it's an acquired taste. And the best things are an acquired taste. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny, you've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so, there's no, no space for art. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's, where's, the, where's the sofa? At home? Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does. The picture no, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything, so I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself. No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up, and if Suzanne sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? 
sheep. So why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, know, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward. I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look no, back at you. We're used to it. That's that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. It's like, <laughs> and they're further away. There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use? It doesn't matter. Your Sorry. Eyes, remember, why your eyes wouldn't are still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, remember, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. Stephen <laughs> Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward, she sat next to me. If, if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now, she's getting the sound from me still, because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> So that's how you've managed to keep this relationship alive. You are yeah, maybe. Just, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on, on the estate who, who did use... Uh, have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I'm going to tell you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's, push bike? Pedal bike? Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. <laughs> she used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> Cycled out. What yeah, you? she was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway, <laughs> oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quick save and nick biscuits. And if anyone went up to her to say stop nicking the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag, and she'd look in it, but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> What, what, what? This so she was insane. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it used to scare me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. It's really, really so weird. So hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror, because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's weird. No, that would Why? be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, it, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are gives sort you confidence? Of, well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your viewing uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew, grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> Sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, because that's something that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D. You can make something. You know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was a, a quite a controversial one, a huge one in London, uh, the pregnant, uh, uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wouldn't be room, because it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. I, I, I don't know what he was trying to say. It's, uh... Maybe she was saying, OK, we've had the human form. This is an example of the human form. Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal and it was like, oh, I've chipped a bit off? <laughs> <laughs> she, one of the arms got chipped off. Well, it, off. it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And why, you see that, that square, Trafalgar Square, <laughs> you, you've got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That, that was what they saw. That was what the artists saw. It's, a, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what that... what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. It's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? What about the subject? Did you think, who's that subject? Who is that woman? 
No, not really, because cause the Lidamides are around and we, we've, we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking, a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there. So Amazing. it's not, it's not shocking, is it? I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is, it just goes to show we're sort of running out of, of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it or they try and destroy it? Uh, Do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel of the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorways are, are the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should door. you be looking at art when, you, when you're when you going at 70 miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, because it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and... and look in know, the mirror. You can, you can. It's not a problem. Wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. What's so you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else... Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> I remember we uh, we were shown uh, the cartoon version of Animal Farm when we were about like 15, 16. We were discussing it afterwards about oh, and the you know, oh yeah, great, oh yeah, communism versus oh the poor proletariat and all this. And this bloke went, "You lot make me sick." It was just a nice film about some animals. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on that, Carl? <laughs> no, go on, go on, go on. What's your point? Because you I, can see the irony there, can't you? I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. Uh, if you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I, I disagree with that because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Schindler's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving. Couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, have we talked about that? What? About things like that in, in art as well. Do you think that, that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, that, like, like films do, things like the Holocaust, and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies? Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did she pick? I, I don't. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Oh God! I, I don't, but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because. <laughs> Even if he'd said the names Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it? No, because that you've then said... I'd ask more. I'd ask more. Then if if he said Alison, I'd go. Well, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, "What was going on there?" Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched a Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One extraordinary on. point. Go on. this, is gonna, this is gonna be he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then. What's your no, take on films? Films films are really good. You can you can get lost in them. Right. And uh You like one with a good story? I like I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> Mission, Impossible <laughs> Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> These are your, these are the what you consider the great works no, I'm of film. I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen yet. You always say, "Oh, have you seen so and so?" You well, Mission it. Impossible One. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended, Carl, was an exhibition of outsider art. I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems. Um, 
or they are just incredibly, you know, uh, the people who aren't in any way part of the art establishment. Well, they're all, right up to psychopathic murderers, uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York. Um, it was incredible, and I bought a, a, a painting of this guy. He's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic, and he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads, and he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips. And it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in, and uh, it, it's amazing. And there's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross. Um, Admittedly, I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James was going, you've got to stop saying that. Because, of course, some of the people are mental. <laughs> um, there was one bloke doing a sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath... <laughs> it was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he'd put a sign that said, real teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these often mentally unstable people. Which is another important value of art, of course. People's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, uh, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean, freedom? So right, freedom. expand on this point, if you would. Well, that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's mm. great, that. For art is freedom. I yeah. love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you, would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, well I, I know the what you meant. Well, I know what you, you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, how, what, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So, Got just take us off. through a typical See, day. I, when would the whistling begin? So, so uh, uh, this was the, you spent, you spent <clears> Christmas <throat> down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking, I'm in my own place now, I'm gonna annoy them. Well, it was mainly, it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble. Mm. And they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> um, it sort of you got boiler problems it. down here. Well. Work, it works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> And what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed, she was like, oh, you can whistle, can't you? I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. Sorry, this sounds like a scene from One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boiler's setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're good whistling, aren't you? Oh, yeah, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home. It is. When you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd, because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up, you, whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a well, whistle. Well, the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off, but yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Whistling, there's, there's, we... there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's I... not. Dunno. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> what, because he couldn't whistle? That was it, it was like... Well, yeah, he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle, well, yeah. can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth? Yeah, I suppose he could have done. I didn't think of that. What about a flute? Or a recorder? Not London's burning again. <laughs> Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off! <laughs> he didn't really think of this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family we're, were bankrupt. <laughs> with no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why aren't you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. 
I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. <laughs> what, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? About two hours. <laughs> two Fuck hours? Put my word down. And then. Then, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it, can we hear it? So you were, whistling, you were whistling after you had your go as oh, well? yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck it now, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. That is Carl's self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do all right. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can come oh, up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't- no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree. Cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth telling that. It's not bad, is it? Now I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you- I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out. And then, yeah, when it wasn't I go, just. <laughs> oh, God, Christ, anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby, maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between. Beethoven and <laughs> squirm. <laughs> There's a cue in that. 